Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take a look again at the introduction to econometrics with R. We're going to take a quick look at a simple data set, a very simplified data set, where we examine the student-teacher ratios and uh, examine the impact of student-teacher ratio on test scores. Only seven observations. Again, this is available in HTML. Um, so we can take a look. Um, chapter 4 html uh, for the this textbook is the introduction to econometrics with our the authors are christoph hank martin arnold alexander gerber and martin schellenzer so uh, let's go to chapter four just to get a quick overview how we could implement uh, in r and we have this data set for student teacher ratio it's very small simplified and we're going to examine the effect of student teacher ratio on test scores uh, again in this video we're going to ex examine the outputs from the R code and then try to replicate everything in Excel so everything from estimating the intercept to the coefficient on the student teacher ratio to the R squared the the ANOVA analysis will try to replicate. So we have here coefficient of determination R squared will uh, break apart how the R results, the R numbers or the output from code can be replicated in Excel. So very simply we load in the data. Uh, it goes into our global environment. We can print it out. We get it below. Uh, we only have seven observations of each. We can plot our raw data again in the scatter graph, the student teacher ratio uh, on the horizontal axis, the test score on the vertical. We can run an ordinary least squares regression and just get uh, the output for that. So we can print out that by just uh, running linear model, the name of the model. And you can see we get the coefficient on the student teacher ratio and the intercept. If we want more comprehensive output, then we have um, the not only the coefficient and the uh, coefficient, the intercept the coefficient on the student teacher ratio. We have the standard errors, we have the t values, and we have the p values. The t values here, the intercept is seventeen point seven three. So that looks statistically significant from zero, very statistically significant from zero. The T ratio on the student teach, the T value for the student teacher ratio is quite low. It's only 1.51. Uh, the P value is in excess of the 0 0.05. So uh, we cannot rule out the possibility that this is. Uh, this co this coefficient here is equal to zero. The overall R squared is a bit low, but that's what we would expect given that we only have seven observations. And uh, the F value and the P value and the F value. So this is the overall goodness of fit. This is taking both coefficients uh, collectively and running a test with the uh, degrees of freedom we have seven observations two variables so that leaves us with five degrees of freedom and the p-value is 0 0.1914 that's well in excess of 0 0.05 so overall we would say uh, the explanatory power of the model is a bit weak we probably wouldn't be happy uh, except accepting as gospel these coefficients uh, obviously we need more observations uh, to bolster our confidence in the model another uh, output here okay we can plot uh, the graph and we can replicate this in excel we can get a summary of the coefficients right which uh, delineates uh, the coefficients the standard errors the t values p values we can get output for the residuals we only have seven observations so seven uh, numbers for the error term if you like the, the first value here is e equal to the difference between the y the actual y data point and the model fit and then the ANOVA analysis uh, where we get 
if you like, um, the sum of the squared residuals, the total uh, sum of the squared residuals, uh, and then we can form the F value to monitor or to make uh, judgments in terms of the overall performance of this particular model. We probably wouldn't be happy with this P value and, and it, at its very basic uh, simple solution here is just increase the number of observations if we can find those observations and we should be able to bolster uh, the statistical strength. So the, the key problem here is self-inflicted. We just went with uh, too few observations. But uh, the main point is, can we demonstrate where we get these results from? How do we estimate the intercept? How do we int estimate the beta coefficient? And how do we get the R squared, the P value, and so on, set up the ANOVA? Um, ANOVA reflects the overall uh, goodness of fit here and uh, because this is a single factor model we only have student te teacher ratio as the explanatory variable we might note here that the p-value for the f test is the same as the p-value here for the t-test and um, okay so that's arising because we have a, a single factor single explanatory uh, variable uh, but generally speaking, the F-test, the ANOVA analysis, is used to address uh, what is the overall uh, performance of the model. And if the p-value here is very low, then we cannot rule out uh, the possibility that the model is not performing well. Okay, And we cannot explain properly what's happening with the specific uh, estimates for the intercept and the coefficient that we have. Okay, uh, again, note the value here is the same as the value here, the p value on the uh, student for the student teacher ratio uh, performs no better than the, the f value uh, that we have here. And because they exceed 0 0.05, um, we, we're not going to be happy or we're not going to use this model and say yes we can reliably predict uh, the outcome. But that stems largely because of our degrees of freedom are very, very low. We have um, seven observations and our degrees of freedom here are five uh, to perform this F-test. Okay, so let's uh, run through some of the uh, other values here. Let's look at Okay, assign the uh, number of observations. So we know that the number of observations is seven. Uh, we're going to say the number of regressors is equal to one because there was only student teacher ratio. The mean value of y is the mean of the test score. And that's equal to, we can see here, 653. We'll replicate these results in Excel. Okay, the sum of the squared residuals we can estimate. Uh, using the sum of the residuals linear models and square. Again, that's a little bit uh, difficult. We can see here the value for the sum of the squared residuals is 1,466. We'll set that up in Excel. Likewise, total sum of the squares, the explained uh, sum of the squares. So let's just go over to, and we'll show also uh, SER and uh, the R squared. Uh, how do we estimate those in Excel? So let's move over to Excel for a moment uh, to see if we can recover those values. Now, uh, first thing here is that we want to estimate the beta. And to estimate the beta, again, the same raw data we start with. Okay, and we're trying to in essentially figure out how do we get this 2.968 which is the figure we would have uh, if we go back to our results this negative 2.968 which is the coefficient on this this the uh, student teacher ratio i'm going to call that lowercase b in excel and to estimate that 
we use this formula that's relatively straightforward in each instance what we do is we take the mean of this, the mean value of x we take the sum of these divide by the number divide by seven that yields us the mean we subtract then in each instance the mean away from the actual observation of the, the, the student teacher ratio okay and that should sum to give if we sum all these this should sum to give zero or approximately zero in excel um but should be zero then we do likewise with y we take the mean of y so take the sum of the y's, divide by the number of observations, calculate the mean, then subtract away the mean in each instance from y. And then take the product of those two, take the product of these, and then sum, which yields us this 225, negative 225.36, and we divide it by we take the x minus x bar square we sum that and then we take the ratio of these two and that produces the coefficient of negative 2.968 which is consistent with the result we have here in our output the 2.968 okay so let's go back into excel again how do we get the intercept very simply to get the intercept now remember that the intercept value in that we're expecting to estimate from the r output here is 713 but to get the intercept value uh, we take the so a denoting the intercept we take the average y value okay so let's just note we take the average of uh, the y's which is this b10 653 and we multiply by beta b the coefficient on the independent variable and multiply that by the uh, average value of x which is given us this 20.21 and the difference between the two is 713.56 and that's consistent with the intercept value in our studio Okay, so um, I would like to now look at the move this on to uh, estimating the R squared. Previously in R we had output for the R. If we take the summary of the linear model, let's just go back to the summary of the linear model run. We can see that the R squared was equal to 31.32. Okay, so to reset that up in Excel, we're going to apply the formulas. Let's just have a look at how we would uh, estimate the R squared. It is the explained sum of the squares divided by the total sum of the squares. Okay, so let's just get some kind of preliminary estimates. Uh, how do we estimate uh, the uh, R squared here, what are the inputs? Well, we need to estimate this uh, y hat minus y bar to be squared. And then the total sum of squares is equal to y m minus y bar uh, to be squared. Okay, so um, Let's go with the total sum of squares first. The total sum of squares is just simply the y minus y bar to be squared. We've already estimated y minus y bar. It's been the difference between each actual test score and the mean of the test score. And then if we take that and square it, we come over here. So we square this. And then we do that in each instance. And then if we take the sum of that, it's equal to 2135 total sum of the squares and we can see that that value is equivalent to what we would get in the ANOVA analysis of 2135.71. Okay, so in the next video we'll explain how we finish off this R-squared calculation and calculate the Y-hat.